This is G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra, Arctic Threat, Storm Shadow, and the Paris Pursuit Snake Eyes with Timber. Now arguably, at least in my opinion, these two are perhaps the best uh, figures to ever come from the Rise of Cobra line. Uh, at least in my opinion. And on top of that, these two are two of the most difficult figures to find on retail and on regular price. If, if if you at least here in Manila, if you guys see these these figures, they're probably in hobby shops, uh, double triple the price because they are just a scarcity. They are very difficult to find. Uh, at any rate, uh, they're they're just phenomenal figures. And right now, I'm gonna recommend if you, if you can see them on the on the shelves wherever you are, whatever country you're in, if you see them on shelves, I say pick them up. Uh, this, these two are my favorite versions of the of these two characters. And okay, so let's talk about them. Let's start with the Paris Pursuit Snake Eyes. Uh, just give you a quick uh, view of the packaging. The packaging is just phenomenal. Very hard to see this guy on the shelf or hanging on the racks. Um, just an amazing uh, piece of artwork uh, on on the on the card for this figure. This figure is part of wave 2 I think yes wave 2 or wave 3 of the Rise of Cobra toy line and uh, usually the first one to go uh, we, we only see him in this outfit once uh, when he was with General Hawk uh, when they were claiming the Joes from the Par Parisian authorities uh, well he comes with he doesn't come with a bazooka which is great he comes with a black knife uh, a pistol a rifle, a sword with a sheath that, that connects to his back, and this rubbery plastic cloth, oh, no, rubbery plastic material for his um, a trench coat. And what's interesting about this figure is he has the probably the best uh, Snake Eyes head mold. Uh, the most, I mean, it, it's not, it's not as movie accurate as the, uh, as the uh, Wave 1 Snake Eyes because the, the movie accurate version one has his lips and nose present but here he doesn't. It, this looks more like the cartoon but nevertheless it is just an amazing head sculpt. I am just digging this figure. Uh, not too hot about the boots but again it, it's great and what's interesting about this is I, I like the fact that they've cut off the sleeves and just molded in the sleeves of the of the jacket just like the Paris Pursuit Baroness and you just have the coat just a, a sleeveless coat draped on him so you can have free movement with the arms and the legs and it, it's just amazing it's an amazing figure uh, his Arashikagi sword is removable you can put it in the scabbard and what's nice about the scabbard is it's whole it, it's a whole piece um, it doesn't have a, a cutout like the uh, City Strike Snake Eyes. Um, I never had a decent Snake Eyes when I was growing up, so I'm, I've always collected all the Snake Eyes figures I could find. Uh, my brothers always had the Snake Eyes, so I always had Storm Shadow. Um, but never had a decent Snake Eyes, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked that I got this guy. Now, Timber is not poseable, but it is a big improvement from the G1 Timber. Uh, which looks something like this. Um, look more like a pig, <laughs> a hairy pig, I think, more than a wolf. But uh, this was G1 uh, timber back then, and it was great. Uh, when you were growing up as a kid, this was awesome. But uh, right now, this new one just totally rocks. So very nice, very nice indeed. I absolutely love this figure. So we'll put him aside for now. We'll talk about the. Wave 5 uh, Storm Shadow, part of Wave 5. This is the Arctic Threat, not to be confused with the Arctic Assault uh, Storm Shadow. This is the Arctic Threat Storm Shadow. He comes, as you would expect, with a huge bazooka. Just great artwork on the box. Very nice. And what a lot of people, you know, some, some collectors didn't really like this figure. I don't know why, but some passed up on him but I, I I personally have a lot of nostalgia writing on this figure because uh, one of my favorite storm shadows was the G1 GI Joe storm shadow that uh, had him in almost the same garb with the striped fatigues and the hood and he had the claw um, he had a red backpack with a sword like this and he had a, he had a bow he had a bow with him 
with arrows on it. And this was my favorite Storm Shadow figure. He would, I think here he switched sides. Um, he went to the Joe's uh, side for a while. But uh, this is one of my favorite Storm Shadow. It's faded now. It's now yellowish. It's supposed to be this color, but it's supposed to be like this. But um, uh, it's got, it got weathered. Uh, the color just faded. So anyway, uh, very nice. I, 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 this was one of those figures I brought along with me everywhere I went when I was a kid. So a lot of nostalgia writing on this figure. That's why I, I had to get this figure. He comes with his two swords. Uh, painted more white, I think, now. The handle has been painted more white, I think. I'm not sure. Um, the, the scabbards are hollow, as with the previous Storm Shadows. And the timber keeps falling. Okay, let's just stand him there. Um, he comes with a claw, uh, which, you know, is, is okay, it's cool. I had to wrap it with the rubber band just so it doesn't, doesn't fall off. His grip is is not very cooperative with the claw, but, you know, very nice indeed. Just like the Paris Pursuit Snake guys, the uh, coat has been cut off, the seeds have been cut off. Um, I would have ex I would have appreciated that the hood be a little bit higher, just like the... Uh, the G1 version, but uh, nevertheless, it still it still looks good. Um, uh, folded back, uh, even the coat has the uh, the fatigues, the striped fatigues. But what's nice about it is that instead of the ver as compared to the version one or the Wave One Storm Shadow, he is able to pose his legs uh, with this trench coat because the trench coat is is flared and he can he can get into them decent poses. He comes with a sigh. I've never known Storm Shadow to actually use a sigh, but uh, I guess he does now. So there. Uh, what else does he come with? He comes with that huge bazooka with a missile and rope, and that's about it. He doesn't come with a gun. Uh, but wonderful artwork on the box. You know, these are these two, the packaging on these two figures are worth keeping. So anyway, very nice. Uh, all the articulation of regular G.I. Joe is present in these figures. Just amazing. Um, and, and more importantly, I think you, you this is the figure you want to get for the detail. Um, trench coats are always good on 4-inch figures, and they just make these these two guys look so cool and awesome. And I absolutely love them. These are probably my favorite in my entire uh, Rise of Cobra uh, figure collection. And, and I'm just glad I have them. So if you if you do find these two on the shelves, um, I highly recommend you pick them up. Um, if you absolutely have to get them from a hobby shop, do not pay more than I don't know 50 percent more of the actual price that it costs. If it out here Joe's cost about nine dollars, so I wouldn't pay more than I don't know 12 or 13 dollars for them. Um, yeah. Uh, paying twenty dollars for these figures is just too much, but um, just be patient. They're gonna come out. Uh, lots of them are gonna come out in your stores, and just be patient. Keep looking around. I'm sure you'll find them sooner or later. But uh, in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this review. These are most awesome figures right now on Rise of Cobra. Uh, the Arctic Threat Storm Shadow and the Paris Pursuit Snake guys. Thanks for watching.